Hi, I'm Brian. I'm about to show you how to do a wheel hub bearing on a Volkswagen Golf. This one's a 2006. It's got a little safety device for the lug nuts. And that's all staged and ready to go. And uh, let's do this. We're seeing you do 17 mm Switch to a 30. 30 millimeter that is, and it's the uh, 12 point socket. Set that aside with your other fasteners, and then switch over to your air ratchet uh, Allen wrench, like that. So I just use my thumbnail and I pull the caps out of the uh, retainer here. There's these little black caps that set them on the jack because they tend to get lost. Want to see what I'm doing? Show you. Come from this side you can see you've got those caliper pins on the back so I'm going to pull those off. Pull this out of there. Set this aside. And it's got a brake pad sensor on the inboard side. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, unplug that. What I like to do is I'll set them up on the sway bar here. Just get them tucked up in there. So the next thing you'll need is you'll need a little T20. A uh, little torque spit, six point, and pull off the rotor. Set that up by those little caps. It's another one of those little things that just tends to get lost. Set that aside. And then next up, switch to an eight millimeter and zip off the splash guard. that it's going to go on. So set it like that and then get all three bolts to just sit right there. You just set that off to the side. Alright, so the next thing you want to do is switch to a 13 millimeter, get up underneath of there and undo the ball joint. There's just three bolts, super easy. One, two, three. And then that thing comes out with it. So pull that down and just put it aside with the rest in a neat little pile. Um, but now you're free underneath of there. Get yourself a hammer and uh, grab that uh, nut. You've got to hit this real square. Don't ding it any other way. Just hit it real square. Get that axle to break through. Switch to your impact gun. Put on 19 millimeter. Get up underneath on that uh, tie rod. your hammer, pop, pop, ding. that's out of there. <clears throat> now the next thing we're going to do is the ABS sensor. We've already got our screwdriver out and we're going to poach that like that. And you should be able to get these plugs to undo but I copied BMW on this really crappy crappy design. They get so full of dirt they just don't work well. I wish they'd give that up. <laughs> I hate those things. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to switch gears here and pull out the cross bolt. Ah. We'll set that one aside. So you're pretty much ready to harvest the spindle now. So we're going to take that nut, back it up a little bit, knock that. Just make sure the rust is broken is what we're doing. We're not trying to drive it out all the way. It should come out okay on its own. Let's set that camper back up on the CD axle. 
I like to bring them out and turn them this way, so that way they're easier to hit. And I'm hitting here and here. I like hitting on the flat spots up in here, but our abomination brake pad sensors in the way, so we'll just have to make do. Uh, one good thing to do if you don't want to beat it as hard is uh, stick, yeah everybody's still getting over that one aren't they? Take a pry bar and just stick it up in there. Just kind of pry on it like this. You don't want to mess up that metal plate on the back side. Be gentle with that. And then uh, just take your hammer, whackity smack. Just kind of alternate. I watch here just to see how effective I'm being. If I'm hitting here and it's not going down, go to the other side. Just work it back and forth. It's so musical. So, there you have it. Let's see how dry that is kind of rattly, kind of dry. This thing was howling going down the road. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, socket, usually 30 millimeter, could even use the one that you used before, stick it right here and just hit it out with a hammer or you can uh, press it out with a press. Usually it's easy to just hit it out with a hammer. I'll show you that method with a vise and a hammer. What I like to do, um, these two right here are usually pretty good. I'll set them on the ground here. This uh, little uh, exciter ring keeps your ABS sensor safe. Notice I don't pull that out. I want to. These never come out. They just rust in there. Forget it. I'm going to set this up in here. And I want to make my hits count. When I hit, I'm leaning down on it. I'm kind of Babe Ruthing on this thing. Squeezing the hammer hard and just leaning on it. First hit, don't expect much. Second hit, you should get a little movement. Third or fourth hit, it's going to drop. Just like that. So, the next part's the hardest part, in my opinion, as far as the teardown goes. You got to pull out this little snap ring. Anyway, I'll go ahead and do that. You get the idea. Um, let me show you what one of these looks like once you cut it off. It is, it should look something like this. You can see where I've just burned through it. And I didn't go crazy berserk on it, just enough to get it to split. In fact, the slag from the plasma cutter was still connecting it. And then you take a chisel and just run your chisel down it this way and get it to pop. And then once you've got it to pop by hitting it down with a hammer, um, it'll just slide right off. Normally, you'd use a device that comes in sideways and just kind of squeezes and then you draw it off or hammer it through. But you just can't do that in this case because of the stupid exciter ring. Um, it's just a little Volkswagen. You know, there's oddities and rarities and all This is a shittity. That's kind of the way I feel about it. Well, usually what I'll do is I'll take the seal part of the um, bearing and I'll set it aside first because it's got the most grease on it. And then just go around this and just wipe it down. And you can use a grinder, you can use a mechanical device or whatever. You can see on this one how the ball bearings have just worn into that so bad. You can fill it with your fingernail. This thing is just so toast. You can buy this separately from your parts store for about 120 to 150 bucks. Um, or just cut that off and then it's ready to rock. So it is nice being me and having a plasma cutter. When you cut with an angle grinder, you want to cut it in kind of a, an arc. You see this one's a little bit of an arc. You can do whatever the crap you want with a plasma cutter. With the mechanical device, you got to do what you can without uh, getting into the exciter ring or going too deep. If you go too deep, you can cause an imbalance. Um, you know, this is a spinning thing. It's got to be balanced. But a little bit of a nick's not going to kill you because it's really close to where the axle is. Um, so anyway, I'll get the snap ring out and then I'll show you some work in the barn. So here we are, we're set up with the plasma cutter, I just clamp on it, set it at about 45 amps, 41 amps. And uh, I cut straight down first, I just let it blow everywhere, make sure to have gloves on and don't let it spray you. Just go down like that. I'm going to come across this one just a little bit more. 
like that. The plasma cutters, they don't heat it up a lot. Um, they do heat it some and that helps. But what I do is I go through here with a chisel and get it to pop up the first little bit. I'll go back down through here. You can see it's totally closed up with the slag. Um, it's not blown through by any means. There's a little heat rose, a little heat mark, but uh, that's the way I do them. It's a real simple, easy, quick way to get them off. So like I say, I'll just take a small chisel and run it through to here, and then uh, just set that on the vise this way. Usually I don't have it face this way. I face the other way. This will probably be fine. Yeah, it takes a little doing. But they give up and they start to separate. This one's going to take some doing. Let's see, that's not in frame. There we go. That felt good. Felt springy. You get it in there, and then all of a sudden it just cracks, and you feel a spring, spring action of it. See the slag falling out of it everywhere. So we'll go back in there again. We'll bang on it. So much easier if this stupid exciter ring's not in the way. I like to hang the exciter ring off so that it doesn't get hit, influence, jacked up, etc. So you see it's starting to gap there. It's starting to come undone. Once you get it that far, you can pull this back out. And then usually, you can just twist it off by hand. Usually isn't what's happening here though. Some of these are bigger than others. So go through that side. Go through this side. See about getting a pry bar on this. Let's see. Let's see if I can remember what's where. You gotta be really careful with your exciter ring. This isn't being real hard because it's broken and expanded and hot and not stuck. So anyway, that's the way I do these. Um, a thousand ways to skin a cat, but if you get these to crack or pop or break or whatever. They come off a lot easier. Um, as far as the damage into these things, um, it's really minimal. Uh, it looks horrible and ugly and I feel bad about it. No, I don't. <laughs> it's not going to hurt anything. And it saves people a lot of money from having to charge them an extra 120 bucks. Trust me, they don't mind. So I turned my pliers on the bench grinder. As you can see here. No, you can't. Anyway, they fit in the holes better now. I just tired of it making a monkey out of me. I'm lucky to be able to reuse this thing after I've murderized it so bad. This is how I've been doing wheel hub bearings. I'll save samples and pieces of different wheel hubs and you know bearing races etc. I'll use those to press out wheel hub bearings on my press. Recently, and I was using this socket set because it's got all these different size things. Recently, I purchased this. As you can see, it's got a little screw um, to where you can actually do them on the car. What it is, it's a long piece of all thread, and they put a nut on it and welded the top. And you got then this uh, arbor type nut, like what you'd find on a brake lathe. Um, so you have all of these different uh, pieces that help you to uh, press the bearing out on the vehicle. I tried it, and this screw. I don't have anything good to say about it. Um, this is not the Harbor Freight one. This is one I paid $150 for and ordered in. And it's really slow. Um, it's cumbersome. It's a balancing act. Um, it's, I just, doing them on the car is just obnoxious. And that screw is just so slow and so underpowered. Um, so what I did is I took it out to the barn where I have my press and I use a press with it and that is a successful venture. That's a really good thing. So I'm going to show you how I do that today on this uh, particular Volkswagen Golf. I'm going to take this, put it up here and I'm going to use the collars uh, to press this out. So I use a large collar here. I set it inside the press. Alright so 
get that set up like this and then you just pick out uh, from the kit something that's going to fit here. That's a tight fit but it'll work. And then uh, I like to take a socket or two, put them in there and then if you can get a, an extension to fit, it tends to make things go quickly, smoothly, nicely. Let me put these together off the thing. And you just take your hydraulic jack and just press the snot out of it. This should be level, but it's leaning for some reason. So I want to brace it up. When you move it, after you've got everything set up, you want to move it by the base. You want to align it this way. That way everything else that you're so careful to get centered, you know, like between the hub and the other, stays centered. electronic pump version of this would be nice. Anyway, get your safety glasses on. Not a huge fan of safety glasses because it fogs and then I can't see crap and then I feel like I'm really in trouble. See that was putting up a lot of fight. If you were to try to do that with that screw, I just, I don't know, I just hate it. <laughs> even with an impact gun, even lubing it up, everything it just sucked so I like this a lot better to press that out set this aside get this out of the way see what a clean nice job that does I mean that's just the way you want to do it so take these put them back take this and get it set up. I hang the uh, part that goes to the strap over this area here. Just kind of hang it over the edge. That way it lines up nice and straight. So that bearing will go in here. Track this. Like I say, we'll get that set up. So what I like to do, I keep a little bottle of transmission fluid out here. I'll take that and uh, swab around the inside here. Just dip your pinky till you feel the fluid get onto it. I'm trying to say this in a non-perverted way. <laughs> the harder I try, the more awkward it is anyway. Okay, so we get that in there. I'll line that up. And when we go to press this in, what I'll do is I'll use pretty much the same uh, driver. We'll just drive it down in like that. And then uh, socket and extension, whatever it takes. So here's the new bearing. We'll get it ready. Oftentimes it's a nice idea to only push it in because the resisting surface is this outer race. You only want to be affecting this part. You not want to hit the inside. You can see it's very level over the top anyway. So we're okay. Now the tool I was going to show you earlier, I didn't have it in the garage, is this guy. Um, normally what you can do to get uh, this race off is put this over it, tighten it down, and then press it off. Um, I didn't have it to show you, but there it is. That should be in frame. that for the most part. Nice and balanced and then move the whole base. Kind of teetering here. 
I'll make sure everything's really level because if it is leaning to one side, for one, your bearing won't start in properly and it'll fight you, be crooked and not work. And for two, it can, you have a stack like this, if it's not perfectly flat level, if something's hanging over a little, it can shoot out sideways. So if it starts to do that, stop and then reset everything up to where you're exactly straight so everything that's going in is in alignment. Can you see this all? Maybe? There we go. That's better. So I'm watching here and I'm also watching to make sure everything stays lined up. If everything's going smoothly, you don't have to use a lot of pressure and it's much, much safer. Um, if something gets a little crooked or something starts to bind, don't keep going, fix it. Flip this over, press it back out the other way if you have to. It should go in nice and smooth, nice and easy. That way you don't have a lot of pressure and you don't have binding that will shoot it out. Sure, make sure that I'm bottomed out. And start putting all our sockets back. All right, so at this point, we're ready for our snap ring. We do have snap ring pliers out here. Putting them in is a lot easier because you're pushing everything down. You're not pushing down and pulling up at the same time. And. Uh, it just goes really smoothly when you have the right tool. Alright, so the next thing we want to do is we want to press this in there. So we're going to do the same thing with the transmission fluid. We're going to put a little around that ring. Transmission fluid, it has uh, things that prevent corrosion. It also has lubricants. Um, it's just a really nice fluid to work with for this. It's real thin. It's real runny. So uh, it's okay in a tight, tight fit like that. Always put your lid back on so you don't sabotage yourself later. Alright, so this is going to go in like this. So we'll find a socket that fits properly, but the most important thing that we need to acknowledge and do on camera is that now the surfaces that we're working with are, uh, we've got two races in here. There's a little split, a little crack here. Um, so we need to make sure that we support this inner race. So we need to find something to do that. So I look in here, find my socket that I've painted blue because I use it so often. So I'll set, can I do just this? Oh, that's so much better. All right, here we go. Can you imagine trying to juggle this and then get the screw going uh, in the vehicle? This vertical alignment is just a much better way to go. It's not a lot of work once you've got the CV axle out of the bearing, but the thing's still in the vehicle. It's not much more that you have to do after that to get it out of the vehicle completely and use it in the uh, press. I have the hardest time shifting gears between thinking mechanically and thinking um, verbally. You know, the right and left parts of your brain just don't get along at the same time. All day I've been doing a bunch of typing and a lot of uh, left brain stuff. So doing this right brain stuff. Especially with uh, pressing bearings, it's like you have to be creative on these. I did hit that a little. No, that's a grinder mark. That's still flat and straight. That's important because it's a close tolerance between this exciter ring and the sensor. I like to have it aligned so that I can see the sensor. You can see it on the back side there. Let's take my hand out of the way. get super close and just stop. Once it does that, you just stop yourself. 
little bit of pressure and then get out of there. I'll zoom you back out and I'll show you what I'm working with here. I take my sockets out, set them aside. When you look at the bottom of this, when you look at the race, let's see if you can see that. You can see that it's just right to the edge of where this curve is. Uh, when you're there, you know that you've done a good job. Turn it, make sure that you're not hitting. Check your sensor, make sure your exciter ring didn't get jacked up too bad. Looks like mine is going to need a little tweaking. There's magnetic dust on that. Uh, metallic dust stuck to the magnet, and so that's the ting ting that you hear. So, hope you like the video. Be sure to click subscribe, click like, uh, add to favorites, all that good stuff. And uh, thanks for watching. Cheers. These are probably the most homely eye protection I have. But surprisingly, these do awesome on a motorcycle. So I wasn't going to film the rest of this. And then everybody always asks me, Dude, where's the rest of the video? And I, I don't know if they all have like great radio announcer voices like that. But that's what they say. Anyways. We all got to make sacrifices, and uh, I'll take one for the team on this one and show you the rest of it anyway. Alright, so you just need a little bit of anti-seize, just so you don't get that metal to metal bind. You know, like if there's a burr or something, it'll just keep going and not be so fussy. Alright. Sure that this is going to be okay. It's not going to get pinched. That it's not wrapped up. So that everything's happy. If you can spread that enough, it goes on pretty easy. Um, you can't see it, but there's a little tab right here, and you want to maintain that tab. Make sure you don't hit it when you're going up on, especially if you're using the Thor method. making sure that I don't get past that. Also, this is going to stick out a little at the bottom and it's got kind of a, a bowl-shaped base. I don't want to clobber that with the hammer either. So as I get closer, I'm hitting more on the outside. I'm not hitting right here or else it's going to smack that up. So while I've got it out, let's stick the pinch bolt through. And those are nuts forward. I remember right. Alright, going on. Going hot. Alright, so you want that snug. You want it to stay on. You don't want to crush the tab. You don't want to pinch this too bad. So just bear that in mind, mind you. Okay, so that's in place. We'll bring this around. Um, we need to get our splash shield back on before too long. I think I'm going to do the bottom end and get the caliper out of the way too. The caliper's going to be going on the front here. Okay, twist this, make sure that you get it of line with the spline so you don't bind it later. Not a big deal, but it happens sometimes. I'm just sharing with what you what I'm thinking. As an experienced technician, you run into all kinds of stuff, like the splines binding and like play-doing, mushing together. You know, just crazy stupid stuff. So you just kind of watch for that the next time around sort of thing. Alright. This isn't wanting to come in, so I'm going to suck it in with the air gun. I'm going to set the torque later. If you don't want to crush that new bearing you just pressed in, do you? We'll do that later once we get the uh, brake.
why is it so cold? It's like summer's never coming, spring's never coming. We just keep going right back into winter. It's driving me crazy. All right. Get our rotor on. We'll put in our OSHA screw, our assembly line screw. Where are you, brake rotor? Not falling on my head. Right, right there. Yeah, yeah. And she's good. All right, so no big deal, huh? Now I got this thing together. So remember this one had that stupid brake pad sensor, that abomination of abominations. And rather than pulling it out and having it have problems, um, I just left it in there. It looks like it's like on the sensor. Which is interesting because there's a lot of brake pad left. What do you know? Those factory pads that are just annoying. They read and go off way too early. I'm just being a whiner today. Don't mind me. So brace that away. Now on these, it hooks in first. If you look at the bottom, you can see there's a little spot right here. So you need that to be on here. And you want to put this on, line that one up, wiggle it, drop it, and then push in the pin on the back side. Switch back to the air ratchet. And uh, before I go any further, I'm going to plug in that sensor. Don't forget. Stupid little stuff like that that's not critical. It's easy to forget, especially if you are experienced with a lot of other stuff. When you work on a lot of American and Japanese that don't have it, you just get a list and it's just not on your checklist. Remember to take those precautions and remember it. Alright, remember those plastic caps we set aside earlier? They're right where we need them because we were careful with them to begin with. Alright, so now that everything's on, we get our 30 millimeter socket back out and get on the computer. Look at the torque spec for this Puma Jumma. And it's going to say somewhere between 85 pounds and 145. That's 85. But uh, don't you believe it? I'm going to go look it up. We'll be right back. Okay, so for the torque spec on this, you tighten it to 200 newton meters, which is about 147 foot pounds. So. Usually on one side you'll have newton meters, on the other side you'll have uh, foot pounds. So, and it's a two-step process. There's, oh, there's so many stupid steps. You tighten it to 200 foot pounds or newton meters. Excuse me. Freaking garbage units. I hate that. 200 newton meters, not garbage units. Then uh, you loosen it a half turn and drive it for a meter. Then you loosen it a half turn and then tighten it down to 50 newton meters which is about 37 foot-pounds, it's 36.7 or 8, whatever. And then you tighten it down more than that according to these things. You know, you say you're looking at this one, uh, make a mark on the inside of where that is after you've tightened it to uh, 50 newton meters or 36 garbage units. And then skip one high spot to the third high spot and mark it there and then tighten it that. So that's basically you know, like 15 degrees or something, or going down, Mr. Tyler. Alright. So, get a flathead screwdriver, pop off the cap. If you don't tighten this down enough, your bearing's gonna come loose, you're gonna be right back in the same boat you're in. Um, if you go too tight, it'll destroy the bearing. So, 
it's important that you do it properly. So let's get this cranked to 200. Loosen it a half turn. Watch the fender. Hey, watch the paint job! Well, that was impressive. So we know that we're tight. So now we go to 50 newton meters. I hope I'm saying newton meters the whole time. I'm so used to seeing garbage units, foot pounds. That uh, it's tough. know which one I'm gonna do. So we're gonna have to check this a bunch of times because I don't have an open way to do it. This is essentially in a cave. Mark that one. See the black dot here. So this one is gonna go to there. This one's gonna be over there. Ready? Excited? Sorry. Say it, I'm quitting early. <laughs> I don't want to crush it. So much for their torque specs. Say when I took it to 50, it just stayed there from when I did 200. Isn't that interesting? Let that be a lesson to y'all. If I go more, I know I'm going to crush that bearing. And that's not in the cards for me. 